everybody. I'm the Pigglesworth, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Along with Piggy. Now we're up here inside the stork, and I know that y'all noticed I'm only wearing boots. Well, it's because my boots are still in really good condition, but the rest of my armor, it was almost worn out, and I'm kind of, I don't want to break it. I think I want to repair it or combine it with something else. So I took it off and stuck it in a chest way down there where the iron farm is going to be. But I figured I would start off up here inside the stork just to give you an idea of what it looks like. Now, what I'm thinking about doing is back here near the tail, we're going to put our, uh, our portal so that we can go to the nether hub so we can also go way down to where the uh, villager sorter is going to be at. But the first thing I need to do is kind of figure out what I want to do with the interior. I'm thinking about half slabbing it and maybe setting up a, a garden in here or something like that. Maybe some storage. I might go so far as to build like a, one of those little, um, it's almost like an auto farm. Not really an auto farm though. It's one of those farms where it has a bunch of bone meal in it and you just kind of stand like an AFK farm and you plant, plant, plant and it makes a whole bunch of crops for you. That would be great to have something like that up here because then I would have crops to give to the villagers. Now the other thing that I need to do is just kind of tidy this area up a little bit. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put glass up in there where the hat is so that way when it rains, it doesn't rain in here and get annoying. And we just need to clean up this area a little bit. We're gonna give ourselves a nicer looking uh, face to this structure. I need to build some kind of a place to stand up here so we can toss food down to the villagers or maybe some kind of a redstone contraption. That might be more fun. Like put a, uh, uh, a pulsing clock that we can turn on and off and it'll spit food at the villagers. I like that idea. So, and then we gotta figure out somewhere to put our command block set up. Cause like I said, I need to set it up where by the flick of a switch, I can turn on and off mob griefing and that way these mobs they'll grief yes you guys i'm talking about you <laughs> they won't actually grief what they'll do is they'll pick up the uh, crops that i toss on the ground and they'll share it with each other and that'll make more villagers and more villagers means that we can get the iron farm working so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, get the portal set up and synchronize it in the nether and that way at least I can get from that portal way down to where Mr. Withers is at that portal. So that, you know, I can tear down the giant uh, structure outside. Because right now, <laughs> well, I'm not even where I could get out there. But I'll show you before I tear it down. It looks like a giant dirt booger just falling out of the front of the bird. And we don't need that. So... I'm going to go ahead and get to straightening up some of this stuff, doing a few of the little details, and then I'm going to bring you back and show you what I've got. All right. See what I'm talking about? A big old dirt booger. <laughs> Just coming out of there like that. So uh, one of the... Oh, I'm not close enough. Hmm. I guess I should have got a little closer. I'm going to run over here real quick, show you what I'm talking about. One last thing I'm going to have to check before I get rid of that platform. Okay, you can kind of see it from here. See that little spot right there? Just a weird little lighting glitch that won't go away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend my dirt path out to here. And I'm going to try placing string right there. Because from down here, you really won't see the string. But I'm wondering if the string will force the game to keep that area updated so that the uh, the lighting glitch won't happen. But once I get that fixed, I am going to just leave some torches in here so no bad guys spawn, and we're going to get rid of all that scaffolding because we now have a nether portal that will take us up there. And I'll just show you what I'm talking about. So originally, the first nether portal that I built was way over here, by the mine shaft, way, way down in the bottom. And I had recreated a, like an area that made it look like the nether was coming into this area back in season one. And I'll have another link right up in the description for you guys. You can watch it. We jump down here and there we go. I always get confused dropping down here. <laughs> but for those of y'all that have never seen it, are you ready? Whoa, 
check that out. Yeah, you ought to go watch that episode. That was a lot of fun. To, this used to be a little bitty ravine, and I dug it out and kind of built a whole nether theme in here. It was really cool. But anyway, I had built this portal, but I knew that I wanted to synchronize a portal up inside the stork. So what I had to do, and this is just going to be a real quick, easy way of doing this. We're going to hit F3. See my block 207, 24, and 53? So the X and the Z coordinates are the ones you're concerned about, the 207 and 53. Okay. Now what I did was I built a portal inside the stork, and I stood on the portal, like where I stood right there, and I wrote down the numbers, and then I divided those numbers by 8. Now your vertical does not matter, but your X, what, wait, I always get this wrong, your X and your Z. Those two numbers matter if you divide them by 8 and say you get like 14.87 or something. You can just round it down and make it 14. But as long as the portal that you build in the nether occupies at least for like the floor, it, as long as it occupies that space, it'll, it'll synchronize. So watch. It should be 49. 49 was... Was, okay, so see how I'm at 48, 49, 48. Watch, I'm a step into the portal, 49, 49. And if you were to multiply 49 times four, uh, 49 times 8, it would equal to these coordinates right here. So 392, 399, those work out. So it synchronizes. And I'm staring at the floor, not letting you look inside the bird. <laughs> Check that out. So I went ahead and straightened out the floor and I figured with all of this uh, white and with all of these shapes in the wall, a very simple, clean design for the floor would work. And I tried it and it, it just worked great. The gray kind of transitions between the white and the, uh, the spruce floor. It looks really good. I like it. It turned out way better than I thought it would. But all of this is half slab, so technically I could knock all the torches out of here. Except for these spots. These spots are not carpeted or anything yet. But all in here, no bad guys can spawn in here. But what we're going to do is come over here. This is where the villagers are. This is my little storage area for different foods and whatnot. We're going to have it we got. This is just junk right now, but it's going to be for potatoes and carrots and wheat and bread. Oh my! <laughs> And this is a little button just, you know, so you can activate the, the swimming. And we got little controls. So I've got it right here where you can go into a dropper and we can put a whole bunch of stuff in here, right? And then if I flick this lever, it's going to complete a circuit up there that is a redstone clock. So we're going to go ahead and go up here because I have got to install this command block. And I told you I was going to show you how to do it. And it won't let me put a ladder there. That's really weird. There we go. I must not have been clicking it right. So when you flick the lever, it's going to push the piston forward. It's a sticky piston. And this, uh, this cobble block is going to touch the repeater, which has a delay in it. Now it's going to send a signal through here, which is going to go over here and pulse and make this... Uh, is it a dropper? I can never remember. I think it was a dropper. It's going to make it spit out food. There is a torch right there. Now when that power comes on, that torch goes off. The delay happens. The power comes off over here. The torch goes on. Back and forth, back and forth. So it makes a simple little clock. But right here, we want to put our command block. Because see, we got a lever right there that's going to power the command block. So I can get rid of this. There we go. Now, you might ask yourself, how in the world are you going to give yourself a command block? Well... We're going to do a little trickery, okay? So we're going to open to LAN. We're going to go to Creative, and I'm going to allow cheats on. And then I'm going to start a LAN world. And now technically, I could go into Creative mode. I could start flying around and all that stuff if I change my game mode. But we're not going to do that. I have a command that I'm going to cut and paste into the game. There we go. We're going to hit T for talk, Control V. Bam, look at that. So give the Bigglesworth Minecraft colon command underscore block. Boop, and it just gave me a command block. Check that out. And we will place it. Uh, where is that lever? Okay, there's the lever. <laughs> so 
So we'll place the lever right there. And then I'm going to place that on top of there. Now this makes it where no bad guys can spawn up here too. So all the villagers will be safe. And if you listen... Well, you hear the switch, but... Okay, so let's... It's daytime. Whoop! <laughs> so, uh... Oh, I gotta be in creative mode to do that, don't I? So game mode one. Now we can right-click. And I'm going to say, um... Time set night. And we'll do that. And so I'll show you. I'm gonna flick the lever. And it's gonna... Watch this guy. There it goes. It turned nighttime. Isn't that cool? So now what I gotta do is I gotta go figure out what is the command to type into the command block that's gonna turn on and off mob griefing. So I'll be right back. Alright everybody. So I went and searched around and I finally found out what the command was I needed. But I ended up needing two commands. Watch, I'll show you. So we got the first block game rule mob griefing false, which means it'll turn off mob griefing. And then over here, game rule mob griefing true. Not true E. <laughs> well, that would, that would certainly mess things up. So, and I'm going to go back to game mode zero. So now we're in actual survival mode. And I've got to dig my way down. And see, look, I'm, whoop. Okay, well, y'all can see that I right-clicked and placed the block. It wouldn't let me look at that. So here's my little setup that I've got going on. Yes, hearts. That is exactly what I want to see. So I've actually watched a few baby villagers come out and be over there and grow to full villager, come up and over and around, and that's awesome. And what I've done is I was using these chests to put food in, and I can sit here in a minecart and see how my hunger goes away. So I can actually AFK here, and if for some strange reason my hunger starts, I'm not going to die. I'm not going to starve to death while I'm AFK. And if I come back, I can just reach these chests, get food out of it. I can place them up here in the dropper, which I'm going to go ahead and do, and we'll turn it on. Check it out. And now they get their food. And see how some of it falls on the glass? Well, that's real easy to get it where they can get it. You just boop. Hit the button, they swim up, and they pick up all the stuff. Isn't that cool? So I'm going to go ahead and shut that off for now. And I replaced the glass with a dirt block. I'll show you why. So that I can look in on the villagers and hit F3. And I think, see where it says E9 forward slash 80? I think that's telling me there's nine entities in front of me, or nine villagers. And I think I want to see that at 40. Oh, there went a baby. Awesome. Right on time. I love it when stuff like that happens on camera. So, we are going to make our way up here because I'm going to show you what I've been up to up in here. Boop, just pop that up there. And eventually, once I get this breeder uh, seated, like I've got all the villagers in here that I need, I'm going to go ahead and fill in most of this stuff because there's going to be no need to get over here anymore. What I'm gonna do is turn this into a spout. It's gonna push villagers to this point. And we are gonna drop. <laughs> oh no, that's not good. Hmm, I might have to debug that a little bit. Well anyway, so I said I was gonna put torches in here. I went ahead and put half slabs because at night, I was down there collecting more crops. And when I looked up here, it was all lit up. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want that look. So I went ahead and just half slabbed it. But we'll fall down here. Don't hit the glass. Don't hit the... Whew. Okay, that worked. So when I first built this, see how I've got a water block there and a water block here? I actually dropped through here, hit this block, and died. All my stuff went everywhere, and y'all can see that my XP is really low now. It was like 22 or something. But anyway, so we're going to get it where villagers get pushed down in here. And I've got to build a little bit of a sorting system, but it's going to let me pull out one villager at a time. And I can right-click on them and inspect them and see what their trades are. Because we don't want to give up any villagers that have really awesome trades to the iron farm. So, here's what's going on down here. <laughs> Whoop. I know, that's an ugly eyesore, isn't it? And right over in here, you're going to see that uh, 
It's missing tracks. And that's because I'm just beneath the ocean floor. You can see where I've had to fill this in. Little water droplets are coming through because there's gravel right up there. And as I kept uh, uh, like raising the ceiling, water kept coming down and washing out the track. So we'll just leave it there for now. But basically what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to get a functional subway going so that I can transport my villagers over this way. And once I get over here and I pop up to the surface, it's going to kind of make sense where in the world I am. Oh, good. So I'm going to run, and I'm just going to tap shift really fast, and we are going to rock it through here. I can't wait till we get to the point of uh, the series where I start fighting withers, because then we can get beacons going, and I can have haste for mining, and I can have super fast running. Yep, crazy ravine. I think I'm going to do something cool like a glass tunnel through here or something, just so you can see it as you go by. But I've built a little redstone contraption. I'm not going to build it yet because I still have to get enough villagers going. We might do that in the next episode. Um, well, no, tell you the truth, we're going to have to do it in this one, aren't we? Because we've got to get our villagers going in, up in the iron farm. That's the whole point of this episode. But anyway, villagers, just like regular mobs, they want to swim up. And I know it, on camera, this is not very interesting. It's very dark, but I'm just I'm wanting to show you what this does. So the villagers are going to be able to swim up from this point, and they're going to be able to come up in here, and then they're going to get pushed to right here. And they're just going to sit here in this little cubby until I put a minecart in here. And then just like we saw a previous episode where I was moving them from the village, I can move them from here. And we're just going to transport them all the way over here to the iron farm. And then I, you guys are noisy. <laughs> Oh, man. But we're going to be able to get them over to this holding cell. Now, I still have to get a... Uh, can't remember what they're called. I think it, it's not a detector rail. Activator rail. Actor, act, actor, actor, activation rail? There we go. <laughs> but I'm going to get it where uh, it's powered, and it'll wiggle, and it'll knock the villager out, and they'll stand on that block. And once I get five villagers up here, I can break that dirt block, and they will fall way down there to where the holding tank is. So, what I'm going to have to do, and I'm just going to do this off camera, because this is going to take a few minutes. We are going to get our max number of villagers in the breeder. We're going to start getting them going down. Let's see if, can I even see it? Whoop, jump. You can kind of see the edge right there where the glass is. And I'm going to start building up villagers down there, and I'm going to bring them over here. So, what I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to get the tanks built, I am going to get the redstone contraption built to knock the villagers out and collect them at the bottom. And then I'm going to bring you back. I'm going to show you that little redstone contraption. I'm going to show you the villagers in the boxes. And hopefully we're going to see some iron golems. Because iron golems mean this thing is working. And then we will finally be done with the iron farm. So, like I said, i got to go up there and do a bunch of boring bits. And then I'll bring you right back. All right, everybody, there's been a bit of a problem. Yeah, these little villagers, they were not cooperating with me the way I wanted. And you notice something, how there's rain coming in? Yeah, I had to tear down half of the hat and all of the glass because something crazy happened. I maxed out at 20 villagers. Now I'm going to hit F3. See, we're at uh, 22 right now. Is that correct? Yeah, we're at 22, so we're, we're doing better. What had happened was I had went ahead and closed everything up and then it stopped at 20 villagers. It wouldn't make any more villagers. I had to do a live stream and had the audience help me out and we started nosing around and we figured out that it was one of two issues. Either it was a 1.84 bug because I updated to 187. That's one change I made. And the other change was that it had something to do with if you built the farm inside a building instead of outside so what i had to do is i had to tear down the hat and i had to tear down the glass and start giving them a bunch of food and now they're making more villagers so we're kind of back on track with that but and i think that's a baby right down there i can't tell um but here's the problem okay i have actually spent a week off camera trying to get this to work so i haven't been able 
to get the iron farm working. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I can't believe it. Ah, oh, so whoa, crazy. Do you see that? It looked like there's water coming through. Hmm. Oh, it's coming through because there's corners right there. Because actually that has carpet on top of it and that's solid. So you can kind of see out outside. Or not out, so you can't see out there. But it's just like hard corners. It's not like solid. So, and this episode ran long. I'm, I'm going to have to call this kind of sh cut it short. I'm going to just pop over here. And make my way over to town. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't get the redstone contraption built. Where is it? Okay, so here's my little... And I've got to... I'm going to come up with some kind of a nether hub idea thingy. I've got to build this out. And it seems so dark in here, doesn't it? Wow, things are crazy. Yeah, I, I like I said, I went to 1.87... And I loaded Optifine for it, but I think some of my settings are kind of messed up. So I'm going to have to fool with those too. But it, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. It just seems like it's darker in here. But you watch out, buddy. We don't want you mad. Yes, you can come in with us. You can even go. Oh, he did. <laughs> he went right through the portal. Um, but yeah, I haven't been able to get all of the iron farm stuff done the way I want. I haven't been able to get the, the amount of villagers that I want. So, I think what we're going to do for this episode, your project for this episode, is going to be to go ahead and make sure you don't repeat my mistake. Make sure that you don't close in your, uh, your villagers. Make sure they have enough sky so they can keep growing. And, ooh, look at that rain. I love the rain. I know pigs don't like water, but playing in the rain can be fun. As long as there's no lightning. No lightning. Do I have food on me? Nope. Well, I'll come back and get food in a little bit. But anyways, I'm going to show you from right here what it looks like. I seriously, I'm going to have to fix the hat because we tore the hat down. <laughs> I just kind of went crazy. I was like, something's got to work. Something's got to work. So I just started tearing away at everything until the breeder started working. See? The poor hat. The whole, the whole bird. Gosh, the poor bird is missing. <laughs> So the hat, we've got to fix the hat. And that light, I hope that lighting glitch isn't back. I haven't been able to get my zoom feature to work because of uh, the new Optifine as well. I can't figure that out. All these troubles, all these troubles and it's raining. But I am gonna go ahead and go. I'm gonna get my little redstone contraption built. Looks like I'm gonna get some food because I'm about to starve. I'm gonna keep working on the area down there make it all nice and everything so when the villagers are ready we'll have a nice area so hopefully next time that we come back the hat will be fixed we will have villagers that i can uh, show you how i transport them and we can have a real iron farm going because there's so many projects i want to do but this iron farm gosh i didn't i didn't expect it to take up so many episodes but that's okay we're just we're still going to have fun with it so remember take pictures of your projects Send them to me on Twitter so I can tweet them out to everyone, no matter what version of Minecraft you're playing, and no matter if you're playing creative or survival. So I'm going to get, yeah, pigs love carrots, so we're going to eat us some carrots, and I will see you guys in the next episode.